Hey, thanks for stopping by today. Today we're going to talk about the difference between a CO2 laser and a fiber laser. I've had a large number of people reach out to me in the last couple of weeks since I've gotten my fiber laser asking a, several just basic questions on why I got the fiber laser, was I moving away from CO2 lasers, those kind of things. And so what I thought I'd do is make a short video today to talk a little bit about number one, why I got the fiber laser, number two, the, the basic differences between CO2 and fiber, and really why I added another laser to my shop. What I will tell you is that um, adding the fiber laser is just another tool. I'm not getting away from the CO2. I um, absolutely love my thunder laser. Um, and so a lot of people were curious about, well, why did, you, why did you do that? And so adding an additional type of laser is just like adding any other tool. It's like your table saw, your router, it's a tool that will give you the ability to do things that you can't do with, let's say, the CO2. So CO2 lasers are typically deal with organic materials like wood, those kind of things. They can cut it, they can you know, engrave it. There's a lot of other things that the CO2 laser can do, but there are certain things that a CO2 laser cannot do. And most of it has to do with metals. That's where the fiber laser really shines. It can not only engra uh, uh, engrave metals, but it can cut metals, very thin metals. Uh, it can subsurface engrave metals. Um, and it's just a niche that if you've got a market for it, it's well worth looking into. And so what I thought I'd do today is we're going to cover some basic differences that if you don't know anything about a fiber laser, uh, things that you may or may not know, um, if you start to look into what a fiber laser is, how it works, um, just some very basic stuff. I've been doing a lot of research the last six months before I purchased my fiber laser, and before then I really didn't know anything other than I was watching a lot of YouTube videos and it looked like it was a very cool tool and it could provide me some options that I didn't have before. And so that's what we're going to cover today. So the first thing that I'd like to address when I first started to look into fiber lasers is the massive difference between the work area that you're going to see on a fiber laser compared to a CO2. Now my Thunder Nova 35 100 watt CO2 laser has a working area of roughly 24 by 36. One thing about a fiber laser is it's the work area is much smaller. And one of the biggest differences that I learned when we went to fiber is that your working area is not dictated on by the size of machine that you order. It's dictated by the lens that you have installed. So in a CO2 where you're buying a fixed uh, size of laser and then you can change the uh, lenses to do different things, but you always have that 24 by 36 work area, on a fiber, it's all predicated based on the lens that you have installed. So most lenses will go anywhere from two and three quarter inches square, very, very small, all the way up to 12 inches by 12 inches. But typically it doesn't get any bigger than that. And once you start to engrave the larger sizes, um, the, the beam intensity is, is less. And so uh, I haven't even attempted to engrave anything that large. I have a 110 lens in here now, which gives me roughly about just a little over four inches by four inches to engrave. And so if you're thinking about a fiber laser, um, it's all about the lenses and your work area on what you're planning on making. And so keep that in mind because um, it's way different than a CO2. A lot smaller work area, um, and um, depending on the work area that you're interested in doing, it's a matter of changing your lenses uh, to get that work area. The other thing that's uh, completely different uh, from a T CO2 to a fiber is, um, in this particular case, you know, we haven't had light burn released yet. It's gonna be any day now, and I think all of us are gonna love that. But on a, on a CO2, um, you have one device profile. You can pretty much do whatever you want to with that device profile. If you change your lens, you don't have to do anything in the software. Compared to a fiber laser, 
um, each device profile will be based on the lens that you have installed. So like uh, when, when we get, whether it's EasyCAD 2 or it's Lightburn, what will happen is I will have a device profile for each lens that I have installed in, in my fiber. And that's going to dictate the work area that you have. So big, big difference there. I was kind of surprised by that when I was doing my research that it wasn't, uh, that you weren't buying a machine with a predetermined uh, uh, work area, that it's all predicated on your lens selection. The next question I've had a lot of people reach out to me about is, how big is this? I mean, it's hard to tell from a video, so I thought I'd address it. Big difference between a CO2 laser and a fiber laser is the footprint it takes up in your shop. This is roughly 30 inches this way and 32 inches this way, and I've got a little bit of wiggle room. Um, but it, if you figure three foot by three foot, you're in pretty good shape. We've got a controller here that's very heavy. It's gonna, it's got to be, you know, well supported. It's much heavier than a, than just a computer tower that you're used to. Um, and so you can see that it doesn't take very much room. Uh, you'll also need to go ahead and uh, provide venting. Uh, and so you'll want to go ahead and it's no different in that respect from uh, CO2 is you got to have the ability to extract the fumes um, of whatever you're engraving, cutting, whatever, whatever metals. Um, and at some point in time, I'll probably uh, buy an enclosure for this. They've got some really nice enclosures, just haven't got there yet. I've got an affinity fan ordered for this. This is just my old fan that I had from my diode laser. It's getting me by, but you will have to provide ventilation to the outside. Um, and again, three foot by three foot by, you know, three or four feet. It really doesn't take up that much room in your shop. One of the other big differences that I've seen since I started to use the fiber laser is the result that you get if you're not in focus. Uh, between a CO2 and a fiber. So let's talk a little bit about that. If you're out of focus on a CO2, you're still going to get some indication that, the, that your laser's working, meaning that you're going to get a wider uh, uh, beam path that's illustrated on your wood, but you're going you're gonna to get some indication that it's working and maybe you just don't have the focus set right. Compared to a fiber laser, if, you're, if, you're, if you forget to refocus your fiber laser and you're changing the height of your material and you go ahead and uh, send a, a file to engrave, nothing's going to happen. There's not going to be any indication on your material that your machine's working. And so, uh, you know, I'm just like everybody else, I've made some mistakes, meaning that I didn't refocus, went to, to a different type of product, uh, generated a design, wanted to uh, engrave it, and nothing happens. And the software is saying that it's engraving, but you don't see anything happening on the on the on the work bed, and you're going, "What's going on?" Well, that's because you, if you're out of focus, if you're grossly out of focus on a fiber, you don't see anything going on. So fiber is absolutely critical from a focus perspective. And again, it's just like a CO2. There are some things that you can do that oh, if you're slightly out of focus and you want to be, but. Um, much more, it seems like it's much more sensitive from a focus perspective um, on a fiber than it will be on a CO2. CO2, you can see that something's going on. It might not be the result you want, but you're going to see something's going on where a fiber, depending on where your focus is, you might not see any result of that at all. So, big. So one of the other big differences that you'll see between CO2 and fiber is your settings. So on a CO2, you have uh, speed, power, focus, and line interval, or, or, or uh, LPI. And typically, those are the four elements that you have that you can adjust to get different results when you're talking CO2. In a fiber situation, you actually have added two additional elements depending on which uh, fiber laser you purchase. You'll also have frequency, and in case of a MOPA laser, you'll have a pulse, uh, and it's measured in nanoseconds. So in, in a lot of cases, you'll have an additional one to two elements that you'll have to understand and master when you're talking a fiber laser compared to a CO2. 
And even more importantly, you know, you can change your speed, your power, your focus on a CO2, and your results vary some. Um, what I've seen on the fiber side is very minimal changes in just about any of those five uh, settings that you're going to put into to your design will have pretty dramatic results uh, in the difference on what you're seeing. And so one of the things that I'm already learning from a fiber perspective is um, any one of those setting five setting changes will result in what you're going to see and there's going to be a big difference. And so from a learning curve perspective, I would say that the fiber uh, has a lot more to learn just because there's five variables that you've got to deal with. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you change any of those five variables, you're going to get a different result. But that's a big benefit as well. Even though there's a little bit uh, steeper learning curve from a fiber, um, you know, there's so many more results from different colors that you can produce. Uh, and so uh, it's it's the capability of the machine that I'm excited about. I'll get it uh, figured out. It's just going to take a little time. So just remember, when you're going to a fiber, there's some additional settings you're going to have to learn um, on what they do and how they act. Uh, again, but uh, the results uh, is what you're looking for. I've saved the most requested question for last, and that's uh, talking about software. So currently, right now, today, uh, if you bought this machine and had this today, you would need to use EasyCAD 2. Um, and so one of the things I want to mention, too, that's, that's big right now is Lightburn is going to be released in, in the next couple of days. We're all very excited about that. I've used Lightburn Galvo and it's fantastic. And so let's talk a little bit about um, kind of uh, does it take a completely different program? This is something that I was pleasantly surprised by. So let's say that you want to buy a fiber, but you're worried that you're going to have to learn a completely new software. Well, if you've got a CO2 and you already know Lightburn and you're used to Lightburn, the beauty of what's coming on the 30th of June is that if you add a fiber laser, it's going to be just another device profile within the light burn that you're already used to. So that's fantastic because you won't have to learn any additional software. It'll, it'll be a little bit different look because the functions are different compared to a CO2 compared to a fiber. But all of your basic functions as far as the interface, all of the tools that you're used to using, um, that will all be identical. Um, and so I am so happy that it's just an additional de device profile. So if I wanted to use my CO2, I would turn my CO2 on, fire up light burn, select the device profile for my uh, thunder laser, go to work, do whatever I needed to. If I wanted to switch over to my fiber laser, I'm in that same light burn program. I just go down to devices, select the profile for the fiber laser. It will actually dynamically change the look of the, of the workspace depending on the lens that you have installed. Um, if you will create a device profile for each lens that you have and that's what's going to predicate your workspace. Um, it will have its own uh, libraries, material libraries. It'll have its own art library um, and they dynamically shift. So if I go from my CO2 It'll bring up those libraries, and if I switch over to fiber, it'll change and pull up those libraries. It's fantastic. I think it's going to be great. I really do see a, a big future for fiber the minute uh, Lightburn is released because the interface is so much easier to work. But yes, so you won't really have to learn any additional software. There'll be some minor things that you'll have to learn, but you won't, uh, there, it, it's not a completely different Lightburn software. It's just a device profile within the Lightburn that you're already using for your CO2 laser. Well, there you have it. Just some simple information on the difference between the CO2 and the fiber. I'm excited about the content I've got coming up for this fiber laser. If you have the ability and you uh, like the content, give me a thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And if you have the ability, hit that thanks button, contribute to the channel. 
Until next time, thanks and have a great day.